up, y'all? This is Zach with Living Corporate, and wow, the year is coming up to an end, y'all. Like we have a couple more weeks till Christmas. How do y'all feel? Are y'all ready to take a break? I recognize. I know I said this before, but I recognize that um, this is not the easiest season for everybody. But I do hope uh, that you're able to get some rest and some restoration from a very hellacious year. So look, you know what we're doing, right? Every single week, <laughs> we're having really authentic conversations with black and brown thought leaders, entrepreneurs, executives, activists, educators, civil servants, and elected officials. And this week, I'm really excited because we have Tony Lawson, who's the CEO, co-founder of Shop Black. And we're going to talk a little bit about Shop Black uh, and black economics and what it really means to like be entrepreneurial in this season. Um, some of y'all, y'all call this a bandemic, something like a bandemic for those who don't you know, like a bandemic is like a play on the term pandemic because it's been a, a very successful year for a lot of entrepreneurs. And I bring all this up to say, like, as we think about practicing entrepreneurship and creating wealth within uh, the black community, I think it's important that we realize we can't practice the same capitalistic models that are exercised upon us like it's just not sustainable and so you know we talk about that in this conversation and just we kind of explore what it really means to to build business and build community in that process so we're going to go there before we do we're going to tap in with Tristan What's going on, Living Corporate? It's Tristan, and I want to thank you for tapping back in with me as I provide some tips and advice for professionals. With it being the end of the year, many companies are doing their performance reviews, so let's talk about them. We initially talked about annual reviews on tip number 22. You can go back and listen to the basics. However, in short, I mentioned how to better prepare yourself for your self-assessment by keeping better records of the results you've created, your achievements, and any recognition you received. Remember, utilizing this information can help make a case for a raise or even a promotion. With the pandemic being a significant factor in our work experiences this year, I wanted to discuss a couple of things to remember for your self-assessment. First, the most obvious is any results you were able to create, especially if they affected the company's bottom line. If you were an employee whose productivity stayed the same or increased, or you were still able to produce results for the company during this time, that is a significant thing that you should highlight. It could even be the thing that helps save your job if your company is forced to conduct layoffs again in the near future. Next, if you helped with your company's COVID work from home or back to office transitions, make sure to list it. Since the pandemic forced many companies to make that shift quickly, if you helped to ensure that process was smooth, it could work in your favor. From helping with policy or virtually onboarding a new hire, to training team members on new collaboration tools and picking up extra work when a coworker got sick, make sure to document all of that in your self-assessment. The last thing I'll mention is to list any significant employee resource group involvement. We all know about the uprising that had companies quaking in their boots and releasing statements about and pledges to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Well, in many companies, a large majority of that work has fallen in the hands of these employee resource groups. So if you've helped leadership brainstorm policies, recruiting practices, or anything to help them with their DE&I initiatives, put all of that into your self-assessment. While it is always important to advocate for yourself during your performance review, with the financial constraints many companies and organizations are feeling right now, it's even more critical. Take some time to reflect on everything you've done at work this year so you can highlight the value you bring to your company. Thanks for tapping in with me this week. This tip was brought to you by Tristan of Layfield Resume Consulting. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Layfield Resume, or connect with me, Tristan Layfield, on LinkedIn. Tony, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Hey Zach, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Man, it's an honor. So, so let's let's get into it, right? Because you know, I follow, I subscribe to Shop Black, so I get all the newsletters, right? I see the features in Ebony and and Black Enterprise, and you know, I see you know Survey Monkey. I've, I mean, I see y'all, like I see y'all out here, right? So, just talk a little bit for those who don't know about Shop Black, like what is it, and what's the story on how we got started? Sure. I'd say like right now, Shop Black is a multimedia platform and we're dedicated to empowering, you know, black owned businesses. That's the short 
story of it or the short description. Uh, the way we got started was 2015, and was, this was around the time when Mike Brown was murdered. There were calls for people who were, you know, boycotting, and you know, there were riots, and they were like, well, like, you know, F this, you know, black-owned businesses, you know, I'm tired of this, da 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 da. And people were looking for options, you know, the alternative is black-owned businesses to support instead of the usual brands that they were using for whatever it was, whether it's their skin care, whether it's hair care, whether it's clothing, whatever. Um, and one of the issues that, you know, me and my co-founder, my wife, actually were noticing was that people didn't know what these alternatives were. And as people who were already supporting, you know, black-owned businesses and going out to do so, we knew what a lot of the options were and we started, you know, a blog. Um, actually a Facebook page just putting like a list out there of what the options were and that kind of grew to a blog um, making articles on WordPress about it and we just saw the demand for such content and the hunger for that information was so great and it just really it coincided with what our values were we were just like hey let's you know let's make a thing out of this and we've just been doing it since 2015 so you know thousands of articles and hundreds of interviews later and here we are still supporting black owned businesses. You know, one thing that really struck me about initially, right, as I engaged Shop Black, um, because it was like what, twenty eighteen, was just like the aesthetic, right? Like everything is so of course everything is like is black, um, but the tones, they everything just seems very intentional. Like I love to hear more about how y'all arrived at your overall just branding approach. Sure. So my wife, I mean, I'll give her credit for that for sure, because she's a, well, now a retired curator. So she has an eye for us, very bougie when it comes to how images should look and the quality of images and photos and whatnot. So, you know, we have this joke where she talks about when she first met me, how I had all these blurry memes on my Instagram page or whatever it was, and she kind of put images that are supposed to look like and helped me set my game up, um, which is true, which is true. Now I can actually look at photos, and now I'm like, yeah, you know, this is something that I like versus something that, you know, I don't like. The intentionality, that's even the word, intentionality between or behind that when it comes to Shop Black is we want to lead by example, and we know that if you are a, let's say, a consumer and you're going out looking for I don't know, a new skincare product, right? If you come across a website or a social media page and their images look crazy, you're probably going to be out of there in 0.002 seconds, right? Versus a feed that you come across or a website that's very pleasing on the eye, you see images that reflect you, the photos look great, and you're like, okay, you know, I'm intrigued. Let's see what these people have to offer. So I think that a lot of black businesses a lot of people do it, um, but there are also a lot that I don't think they're taking into account the importance of that first impression. So your whatever you're selling could be the greatest service or the greatest part in the world, but if you don't get people to get the first okay or the first nod, which is your initial aesthetic, people aren't going to be able to take the next step or they won't want to take the next step to find out. So we do that with our site because we've seen some craziness out there when it comes to, you know, businesses or sites that are related to this and we've seen it as it relates to black owned businesses period and we just want people to be able to get the recognition or the support that they deserve and we just want to set like i said set the example that hey we feel that this is what x should look like and we you know encourage or behoove you to kind of take that into consideration as well when you're trying to put your brand out there too you know, I want to talk a little bit about effective relationship building and strategic collaboration. You know, you talk mm -hmm. about um, the platform Shop Black, and it highlights a wider array of individuals and businesses, right? And I, I recognize that the center spoke is Black-owned business, but then, like, you use that to then mobilize all sorts of other things. My question is, like, what was the journey in building that connectivity and then beyond that, maintaining it like you have? Sure. So the journey for me. I guess the relationships that we have so far, there are many, I guess there are a few different relationships, right? We have the relationships with the consumers, we have relationships with business owners, and we have relationships with servers, right? So in all of those cases, I think the overall boils down to is credibility. 
Um, I think that makes it easier to build from the get-go because people are generally skeptical when you, you know, ask what it's asking for an interview or it's asking, you know, whatever you're asking for. They want to know, like, hey, you know, one, what, who are you? What do you, what's in it for you? And then what's for me? So what I found has worked is coming to the table, offering something of value. So I'm saying, hey, I want to make sure this is a win-win, not just for and not, I need to be a win-win. It can be a win on their side, and I don't need to win. Like, for instance, the first years of Shop Black, which is in November 2015 you know, until now, well, till now, we haven't charged for any, like, features or anything like that, right? And this whole time, like, almost out the gate, people are like, oh, you're asking us about promotional services and how do you promote my business and how can I pay to promote, how do you charge for promotion? And I was like, we don't offer promotional services. We're just basically posting businesses that we've come across and then we like them, we like what they've got going on, and we just look at them as great examples of what a business should be doing out there on social media or just in the business sphere, period. And literally, so like I said, you know, just coming out there, offering value, saying that, okay, we don't want anything from you. We just want to promote your business. We want to tell people about this dope business that you've got, this dope product, because we've either seen it, we've used it, whatever it is. Um, you, it's a husband and wife business. You all make like a, a dope looking couple and we think this will be inspiring. So we just want to bring some positivity and, you know, inspire our readers, educate our readers. You've done. And just putting that out there without really expecting anything in return. So, you know, fast forward five years later, you know, we've built up a sizable following and email subscription. And folks have always been like, yo, when are y'all going to, you know, make some money? When are you going to, like, monetize this? You should monetize it. Da, 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 da. What are y'all doing? And we're like, no, we haven't really you know, done anything yet. We're kind of just waiting right now. What we're doing works and we're comfortable with that. So we didn't really start charging until maybe a few months ago. We're like, okay, let's start you know, doing some prom promo and some advertising services because my background is in marketing. So I'm like, all right, that's the easier list for me. And Chantrell, my wife, you know, her background you know, in the arts and aesthetic-wise. So that kind of worked in that regard. So building those relationships basically came from just putting stuff out there for free, being able to build an audience. So we could now take that audience that we had and actually go to another individual or a group and say, hey, this is the audience that we have. Are you interested in being on our platform, right? So those are the ways that we've built a relationship, either just putting value out there or expressing or communicating the the benefits of being on the platform for whether it's business owners, service providers, or authors, or whatever it is. And also it's important for us to make it clear going back to the credibility thing, that, look, we've been here, we've been doing this for a while, we're not some new buy black, shop black, your mother's black, your auntie's black, everybody black, you know, type site. We've been here, we've been doing it, and here are the receipts. We're not some get some followers quick scheme or, you know, we're not following a trend. So I think that when people see that, it's here to build those relationships and maintain them because there's – there's some um, authenticity and there's a level of trust that like, okay, these people, they're about it. You know, it's interesting that you say that, right? Because I think when I connected like back in fall 2018 and I remember like, you know, at that point, I think living corp, so living corp is only like two and a half years old. So at that point we were only, we were only like five or six months old. And yeah. to your point, like it's tough, right? Like, and I know this wasn't the case with us. We were just, we were just running. Like we were just, we were just mm -hmm. busy, but it's interesting the reception that Living Corporate gets now to like when we very first got started because mm -hmm. you're right. Like there are a lot of spaces out there that aren't authentic or the intentions at least aren't transparent, right? In terms yeah. of like, okay, what am I trying to get out of this and what are you trying to get out of me? Sure. And some, some of that has to do, I think, with it's really white supremacy, man. It's like this like attitude that we just have to dominate one another. Like this very rare, I think, sadly, it's rare for folks to come together and be like, no, look, I have this intention and I want to help you with this. I just want you to help me yeah. with this and like that be right. it. Like I'm trying to get something off you on the back end. Oh, yo, I'm, I'm hiding yeah. this thing from you over here. It's just like, no, I just genuinely want to build this thing. And like, yeah. I, I just, that really resonates with me because, you know, living corporate is taking some time, but we started just, I think when we first connected, like we were just a single podcast. Now we are 
we have like multiple content series. We have multiple web shows. We have a blog. We have like other partnerships and things that we're like that we've launched and other things that we're going to announce soon. And so I think, I think about like, but, but it takes, I don't know, like, are there any people that like, are you thankful for that you like still think about that? Like kind of gave you a chance when y'all were young that like really helped propel y'all to like continue to build the relationships y'all have now. I would say, I mean, and not to sound crazy, but I, and I wouldn't even look at it as giving us a chance because if you're a business owner, you're hardly ever going to say no to free publicity, right? <laughs> if you're trying to sell something, why would you say no to someone who's trying to publicize your business or product for free? I do feel like it's kind of tough. Uh, and maybe I'll think of an example, you know, after the fact, but I think that most of the, whether it's interviews or, you know, high profile or stuff that we've had has been uh, as a result of the work that we've done, you know, I don't, I can't think of an example where it's like someone was like, all right, let me throw you a bone and, you know, whatever. I actually don't have an example of that. And that's fair. I guess, I think because we probably, so we're, we're different, like we're similar, but we're different, right? In that like living corporate exists as a media network and we're not Mm -hmm. necessarily like focused on black businesses as much as we're focused on like this idea of like centering and amplifying people. And I think maybe because also like everybody has a podcast, right? And so like, Mm -hmm. if you just come and say, well, I got a podcast. The reason I ask is I think for me, some people that really like gave a shot early in the game Mm -hmm. was like DeRay McKesson, Mm -hmm. Minda Hart. um, Like there's some other Mm -hmm. people like who in our community have a little bit of juice, right? And then who kind of helped. And then like, I was able to be like, okay, look, I built, I got this relationship. Okay, now I got this one. And I was like, you could kind of just, bid against yourself until you just sure. continue to, you know, that kind of leads me to my, my follow up question, which is shop black almost kind of seems like a digital black wall street. Like there's a sharing of research and capital, like in terms of just access information network. My question is, do you see any of these principles transferable to like black and brown working professionals in like a nine to five environment? Yeah. I mean, I see several parallels, you know, I mean, in the media space, and I think just in business general, there are several types of skills and skill sets that you're going to need to have to your success, right? And I feel like you can easily learn those at a job, you know, whether it's sending professional emails, whether it's phone etiquette, sales, customer service, you know, all these things can be learned at a nine to five and then transferred if you want to, you know, pick up a side hustle or jump into the entrepreneurial pool. But I think that these are all things that can be learned at a job. In intelligence, these are all things that corporate America should, you know, be teaching you. We're talking about corporate America jobs. And even if you're just talking about a, you know, uh, your uh, customer service rep at a, I don't know, wherever, T, you're still learning how to deal with people. You're learning how to read people over the phone. You're learning how to still negotiate. You're learning customer service. You're learning how to manage people, you know. And pick up on non cues, cues when you can't see who's actually on the other end of the phone. So all these are transferable to business and entrepreneurship. You know, how does Shop Black encourage entrepreneurship for those aspiring or interested in like really like going full tilt into entrepreneurship full time? I would say that the stories that inspire. So whether it's you know, a story about a lady who beat cancer and now she has a line of clothing or wigs for, you know, other survivors, that's inspiring, right? So you might have been on the fence about doing something where you're like, damn, this lady beat cancer and she's making it happen? I don't have half those problems. What, what's my excuse, right? Uh, we can share information and resources to educate folks. So it's about, okay... I want to raise money or I want an investor. I want something to invest in my business. So we would have some content about, okay, tips for getting investors, you know, what are investors looking for? What check boxes do you need to have taken care of for an investor to take you seriously or for you to be prepared to go have this meeting or phone call with a VC or private equity or the angel investor, whatever it is, or your uncle that has some money, you know, what is he thinking before he's going to take you seriously? And lastly, I mean, in the interviews that we do with 
entrepreneurs we often ask what are some advice that you have for aspiring entrepreneurs or business owners you know and they lay it out like hey i would suggest you do this this that and the third my advice would be to you know keep your head up my advice is don't let people tell you no my advice is to you know focus on financial management so there's a wide array where we almost ask that in every single interview just so that there's a wide pool of opinions and advice for people who are trying to take that step or interested in taking that step entrepreneurship yeah i'm curious like you know we talk about shop black and like you know it's been an interesting season right like i said you know we have you know covid 19 you know, you're talking about this next recession is going to be, you know, even more challenging than the one is one before. And unless we like, you know, do some more stimulus packages, like, you know, it's going to be tough. I'm curious as to like, as someone who engages a network of black entrepreneurs and like in the space, like what trends or just observations are you making out there, you know, in this season? Sure. So good and bad. What I've noticed personally is that I don't think people are actually prepared for what may be coming. And not that they don't want to, but just financially aren't there. Um, I don't know the exact figures, I can't remember, but a lot of people don't have any savings. They don't have enough saved up for, you know, one emergency. I mean, unemployment is crazy right now. There's a lot of unpreparedness. There, even with entrepreneurs, like, COVID showed us that you can't rely on just having a brick and mortar business. You need to have some type of e-commerce set up as well. A lot of people didn't know that or didn't take that into consideration. And COVID is hit. Nobody's going out. Nobody's coming to your store. And now you're, you know, you're kind of like struggling and trying to figure out, okay, how do I sell online? And even if I had some type of e-commerce system set up on my website, how do I actually focus on that now? What does it take to actually pivot from 100% brick and mortar to 100% online or what's the right mix? You know, like the marketing, SEO, all these things that come with being successful online because it's not just like, okay, phew, now I'm online and I'm good to go order. Where are you? You know, there's a whole bunch of work that goes into it being found online as well. And that's also what we try to help people with. Like, okay, well, here are people that want to support black businesses. We can plug you into people who are pretty much looking for you. Right. And also it would help if you have these things in place. And, and this kind of goes back to the aesthetic thing because we already know what works for us. We know what people have been looking for, you know? So I'm like, hey, bro, your barbecue sauce is a bomb in all counties in Texas, but no one's going to know or give a chance if you don't have these certain things in place. So I'll say that lack of preparedness in some technical aspects, specifically I'd say e-commerce there. Yeah. What I'd say that another trend that I have noticed that people are doing is side hustles. Like people realize the importance of picking up a stream of income. Like, okay, how do I learn? The people are really actually hungry for knowledge right now. So whether it's courses, whether it's learning a new skill, whether it's learning about stocks and investing, People are really into that, and those the people, the entrepreneurs who have digital products, like, you know, like courses, whether it's about how to invest, whether it's about how to market, whether it's about how to crochet and sell some products, you know, they're doing pretty well because information is selling right now. People are hungry for information, and the entrepreneurs that have information are doing well. Now, there are some people out there who are making money not because they have this skill that they're selling you. They're basically making money from selling you something, right? Some people are basically making money from selling you ideas about how to make money. They don't really know how to make money. They're just selling you on, hey, this is how you can make money. Pay me $10. So you pay them $10. <laughs> and now they're becoming rich. And you're like, you know, where's the dream that you just sold? Kind of, it's kind of pyramid scheming, yeah. It's very pyramid scheming. It's very pyramid scheming. <laughs> you know, a little bit of sleeve going on there. I'm not too fond of that. Uh, <laughs> So that's definitely out there. That's another trend. Um, yeah, selling information is great, and it's even better when you know what you're doing. Or even if you aren't the expert in what you're selling, at least have done your research to the point where you put like a great product together, where you've done the research and you're like, okay, these are facts that I'm putting together. I haven't sold a house, so I haven't flipped you know, 20 homes, and I'm putting out a course on how to flip homes, so I haven't flipped one house. But... I've scoured the internet, I've done my research, I've watched these videos, and I've collected all this data, 
And now that I've told it for you, so you don't have to watch a thousand videos and read a thousand books, it's all here in this course. Now you can actually take this information and go flip a house or whatever it is, is yourself because I've saved you the time and money. So now it's, it's worth me getting paid for that time and effort that I put into putting this course back. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Like, you know, so there's value in that. So let me shout out somebody, Nikayla with Side Hustle Pro, right? Yeah. So like, like yeah, Nikayla's the homie and she's okay. a perfect example of, okay, look, I have this actual bit of insight that I'm going to charge uh, you for, but I'm going to charge you at, at a wild discount. Like I'm not going to charge uh, you a premium. And guess what? If you follow these steps and you're consistent, like you will blow up, yeah. like that's worth it. Right. Like I think, man, you know, something I talked about like a, a while ago was just like the concept of like, it's tough because like, I really believe in group economics. And I think there's this thing though, like well, black folks, some, sometimes like we can't practice the same capitalistic tenets that white folks do in terms of just like extorting each other. Like I can't be out here just like yeah. charging you on like everything. Right. Like there yeah. has to be those where like, I mean, like maybe, yes, of course, I want to make sure I can give you something, but we can also sure. barter something of equal value. And like, we can do this and we can do that so that we're not like, yeah you know, killing each other out here, right? Like yeah, we, you don't need to bleed everyone dry. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> like from something, I literally tweeted this a while ago. I was like, you know, look, I'm a social entrepreneur, entrepreneur. right? Yeah. And so like my intention is to give away all the content. Like, so we have, I mean, hundreds of podcast interviews. We have all these different mm-hmm. worlds content that is like, I mean, peak content, right? But I'm uh-huh. never going to, I'm never going to create, even if we do like, if we ever do like a subscription model, it's always going to be like free subscription. You just sign up, but you're not going to pay. Anything. I'm yeah. never going to charge black people for content to help them be free. Right now, what I will right. do, though, I will like be creative in how I engage like these white institutions that want our time and space. I plan on just yeah. charging them a premium. Uh-huh. What we do is like we charge like we, we, we hit each other with these just wild price tags. And like, again, I'm not talking about like a restaurant or a clothing store. Like I get that. You know what I'm saying? You pay for quality. You pay for, you got to eat, you pay for that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm yeah, talking right. about more so like er, to your earlier point around like services, right? Like those types of things is like, I get it. Like I, again, and I get that we have to also survive. I, I wish collectively we could like be a bit more community centric and just how we practice our economics, right? Because I don't think it's sustainable for us to be charging an arm and a leg for each other. We got to figure out ways, I think, to go and charge the people who have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You yeah, know, I am completely what you mean. I don't think that's sustainable either. You can't bleed people that are broke, you know, and I'm not, not saying the black community is broke, but I think it's on us to like you said, be social entrepreneurs. Don't just be out there trying to be a shark and gouge everyone. But have some type of social intent that is beneficial to the people that you are serving, providing a good service to. And I think that that's, that's actually the better way to get ahead. Other than the whole, the fast money, oh, ha, ha, I got him or I got her, got him. That type of short term and it's not going to last, you know, that's not going to last long. The other thing, if you're giving, you're getting so just be be a giver make your money because you're a business too but right be a giver i think the other thing is that we you said you said i want i don't want to say the black community is broke it's okay i'm saying we are broke like comparatively speaking like we don't have the same yeah household like the like the household wealth is like the disparity is so stark yeah there's projection showing that like like we might be down to like zero dollars by 2050 so it's like it's just scary you know negative (laughs) negative you're right you're right i'm boosting <laughs> underwater because it wasn't 2050 it was like zero dollars by like 20 30 something or 20 40 something it was like ridiculous and, yeah. so, and so to your point though like i think to that end is like the other reason why you want to do that is because man our community is small like you know what i'm saying like right. i didn't know that you knew nikayla like, like i didn't know that you knew her and so like you know like, when mm-hmm. like everything's like one de- like two degrees like, her husband that's what's right. up yeah that's what's up i um yeah. and, and this this is not an ad but shout out to side hustle pro but yeah, like it's interesting because it's easy to get a bad reputation. Like all it takes is, you know, like let's say, you know, so you and I, right, we were kind of had it before, like I was being persistent or whatever. All it takes is for you to hit up Nikayla and be like, man, this Zach Nunn dude is annoying or man, right. he's really disrespecting my time. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, two or three people in Nikayla know, and not that y'all, yeah. not that we're messy, but it's just like we're off relationships. And so if you go out here and you bleed a couple of people one too many times, you don't think that's going to get uh-huh. back? Cause I'm out here, man. I, and I know, <laughs> I know that you know some people who like are whatever, so 
who like have this whatever reputation, but when you go behind the scenes like, oh no, like do not deal with that person. You know what I'm saying? We all yeah. we all know at least yeah. three or four of those people. Yeah. Small world. It's a small world, man. You gotta you gotta be thought what you said, I think is hundred percent right. You gotta be a giver, man. It's like how you and operating from an abundance mindset. So let's do this. Shop Black is constantly growing, y'all doing y'all's thing. As you look at the calendar, right? As you look over the next like twelve months, eighteen months, like what are you really excited about? I'm excited about some of the partnership conversations that we're having right now. I think that they are going to benefit business owners in a tremendous way. I'm excited about the directory that we're building. I'm excited about, I mean, I'm excited. I'm, I wake up at Shop Black. I wake up early and I go to sleep late, you know, just shop blacking. And I don't mean shopping all day, but I mean like working on this business. So those are the things that we have going on, some tremendous partnerships and the directory, as I said, and also working on offering services to business owners, whether it's access to capital, whether it's access to consultants, you know, for customer branding, whatever it is. So we're building all those relationships. Also, you know, speaking about relationships and um, strategy. So that's what we're doing. And, you know, just figuring out what makes sense. You know, some of these people are black, some of these people are not black. But it, to me, honestly, whatever benefits my people, you know, at the end of the day, if you're the best person to provide this info, by all means, let's make this partnership happen because your platform is going to help them get to where they need to be. That's, those are most of the things that I'm excited about. And hiring, so I can take some of this weight off my shoulders because I need some help. So writers, social media, you know, managers, hit us up. Y'all heard it, man. Now, look, y'all going to No Notes to check him out. And I'm right there with you. It's hard. You know what? It's, it's been still hard for me to find. It's interesting because it's not hard to find people who want to do like media like, you know, hosting, mm-hmm. like, audiovisual content. But, man, finding writers, mm-hmm. that's been hard. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. yeah. You know what you could do that might work? I'm gonna, and I'm going to start doing this. actually reaching out to HBCUs and Yo, uh, smart. Journal- journalism majors. Smart. You that's, know? that's it. Look at you. See that right yeah. there? This is, this is it, man. This is it written real time, man. Sharing ideas, resources. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Look at Tony. Now, Tony Lawson out here living. He's living shot black. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all, this is not an idea. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He is is his body. What you talking about? Don't play. Um, man, this has been a dope conversation, man. Before we let you go, any parting advice you wanna you wanna give to our audience? Any shout outs you wanna have? Advice. Uh, I would say, you know, no matter what you're trying to do, um, if someone has something that can help you get to the next level, you know, relationships from from a position of bringing something to the table. You know, um, add some value. So, you know, you're respected, you know, you give them the respect that they, you know, give you and that they deserve. I would say my advice is it's a good thing to develop emotional intelligence, whether this is corporate or in the business world, you know, recognize your emotions and not take things personally and be able to pick up on, you know, cues from other people. Like that's one thing that I am, you know, always trying to get better at like someone could email me and say oh you know i'll get back to you you know my goldfish just died of coronavirus and my dog just went blind and my mom just left my dad after 50 years of marriage <laughs> and i'm like uh, so about that email I <laughs> <Yo, you. no. laughs> I mean, bro i'm gonna tell you something no like real story <laughs> empathy is like super important empathy is Super, super, super important. I'll never forget, man. I had this, I had somebody, man, and we were talking. Out of nowhere, they just fell off the face of the earth. Like, literally just stopped talking for like four or five months. I finally hit them up with a little eye emoji. I was like, man, what's up? And man, when I tell you, they hit me back and they said, oh, you didn't know. Posted a link. Tony, this person had gotten carjacked at gunpoint and beat up, was on disability for several months. I said, yo. And here's the thing. I didn't come yeah. at, I didn't come at them crazy or nothing, but in my heart I felt, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I, I was like I was like, mm, but I was kind of I was getting nasty with them and I was like, you know what? You're right. You got to right. extend some grace, man. And the the, the wild part yeah. is is that like it's important to like read social cues and like kind of and extend grace because man, you're going to look up and you're going to need that same grace if not more. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah, it always it always comes back around. So I'm learning how to, you know, be more mindful of these things and not just get straight to the business or the point like that. Be a, you know, be listen to what this person just said. You know, be a human about it type of thing. So sent me an email yesterday. I think they've been trying to reach us over 
Um, after we sent like newsletters, he sent like a few emails. But he's like an inventor. He's like an elderly man. He like he has some patents. You know, he was trying to sell me a thousand dollars, and I kindly, you know, refused. Like, oh, no, thank you. Um, and then, you know, anytime I send out like a newsletter, he's always just fine. Like, oh, this is your last chance. Take it or leave it. And I'm like, I already <laughs> left it. You know, you're the one who keeps asking me about this stuff. I don't want it. You know. Then last email I sent out, he responds, and he was like. Black business, my ass. Wouldn't know a black business if it sat on your face. <laughs> oh, like, no. <laughs> so normally, like a few, maybe months, maybe years ago, I'd have like literally not even care. And I was just like, you know what? He's probably pissed off and stuff isn't going right in his world right now. And let me just kind of ignore. So I helped him unsubscribe from the email list because he doesn't. <laughs> Remember, he doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we need to guy said, out. So. <laughs> Tony said, I helped him unsubscribe, which means you went into your MailChimp and mm. you copy and pasted that man's email and, yeah. <laughs> and you said, remove. <laughs> I said, remove. I did it for him. Because <laughs> my emails, I'm not bringing him joy. So, that's, hey. no, that's, that's real talk. But see, and sometimes you got to have the emotional intelligence and maturity to guide others where they need to go to, right? Which is sometimes yeah. off, your, which is sometimes off your email. I mean, that's okay. Right. Um, they don't know they need it. They don't know that they need it. Okay. Well, look here, man. We appreciate you, y'all. You know, we do this every single week, right? We're having conversations, black and brown folks centering mm-hmm. black and brown experiences. We're a media network, okay? So you know, hit us up. You got us. You know, we're all over uh, Beyonce's internet. So, you know, I'm not going to give all the domains. Just type in Living Corporate. We pop up now. Our SEO is actually popping out here. That's a callback to the early part of the interview. Um, What else? Let's see here. Subscribe, share, follow, retweet, all of that stuff. Till next time, y'all been listening to Tony Lawson, CEO and founder of Shop Black. Make sure you check links in the show notes. Till next time. Peace. And we're back. Yo, I just want to thank Tony Lawson again. Make sure y'all check out Shop Black. It's literally everywhere. Just Google it. But it's also in the show notes. And uh, until next time, y'all. Peace. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.